necessarily represent the views of Umma Channel. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Community Platform. <clears throat> Tonight we will discuss something that has been a major media news story over the past week or so. Um, with the release of the official identity of the uh, ISIS individual previously known as Jihadi John by the media. Uh, the individual was identified as Muhammad uh, Mwazi a University of Westminster graduate of computer engineering, computer sciences. Um, and apparently this information had been held by the intelligence agencies for a while. Why it's you know, felt that now is an opportune time to release those details, um, no one knows as yet. In um, the aftermath of the release of this identity, CAGE, uh, which uh, is a charitable organisation which started uh, work as a, a, an advocate for those who are wrongfully incarcerated across the world uh, or, you know, um, subject to rendition and torture. Uh, one of Cage's uh, spokesmen, uh, Asim Qureshi, uh, headed a, um, um, a media conference where he gave a statement that they uh, had worked with um, um, the individual now known as Jihadi John, uh, in the past, uh, prior to uh, his movement uh, abroad, and in those days he was a, uh, and you know his his words were, a beautiful young boy who was you know of excellent manners and who was very polite, very down to earth, and a very uh, gentle soul. Um, in uh, the uh, in the immediate. Um, following of this statement, uh, all of the uh, British media, both left and right of the spectrum, have jumped on the bandwagon of criticising Cage uh, and saying that uh, their statement is tantamount to providing justification for the uh, actions committed uh, by this individual being involved in beheadings, um, and that by saying that this person may have been a different uh, individual or a different type of individual a few years back, um, they are almost trying to soften or justify his position. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that came out from Cage's press conference was that the MI5 had repeatedly been in touch with Mohammed Mwazi um, and harassed him uh, to, uh, on various junctures <coughs> and the uh, idea that was posited or the hypothesis was that this may have played a uh, significant part or may have been one of the factors in radicalizing an individual to the extent that they are now infamous as the, the uh, jihadi john that uh, everybody has come to know. Um, to discuss this topic uh, I will have two guests with me in the studio the first of whom is already here with me the second one, uh, not quite, but uh, inshallah he'll be in the next 10 or 15 minutes. I'll introduce my uh, guest and uh, begin the conversation. My guest today in the studio is Noor Dad Aziz, a uh, councillor, Labour councillor from Great Harwood <coughs> and a community activist. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Community Platform. Wa alaikum, um, So, to, to begin with, uh, uh, as is you know, quite customary, do you feel that trying to contextualise the discussion, trying to say that there may have been drivers of factors which lead to people, uh, you know, ended up at point A or B. This in itself provides justification for their actions? Can I first of all start uh, by obviously condemning his action and his heinous acts that was occurring. I'm not here to make any excuses or justifications of a jihadi John's action. I think he, uh, the murder of innocent civilians and aid workers is an abhorrent and wrong act to commit. And two of the people that he is 
murdered and beheaded was Alan Henning, who in many of our eyes was a hero who gave up his Christmas to, with his family to uh, go on and give aid to the people and children of Syria. So I think, uh, first of all, I think that needs to be clarified and, you know, made an important point. Okay, before we move on then, why, why, does, why do Jihadi John's actions, Muhammad and Wazi's actions, um, require a special kind of condemnation? No, they don't require a, a condemnation or a special condemnation, but a crime in whatever act is wrong and there can be never any justification of criminality. I, I agree with mm. you. What I'm saying is why are Muslims put in the position of having to condemn this, but you are like a, I said in the introduction, are, are a member and active councillor of Labour Party. Your party is responsible for millions of Muslims' deaths. Right? Why is the hacking, and it's you know, very gruesome, it's very graphic, it's done for almost, you know, to try and cause the maximum uh, offence, the, all these videos of the beheadings. But why is that, that death, you know, worse, those seven or eight people, the journalists who have been killed, why is that worse than the million Iraqis that were killed as a uh, part of the lie from one of your prime ministers? Why does that not require the same degree of condemnation from everybody who's associated with him? And, uh, as a member of the Labour Party, I've said in many previous, uh, the previous shows, the, the Iraq war was wrong. And in my opinion, certain people do need to ask questions, but I'm not here to justify yeah. anyone's action. But I think, again, uh, the point I alluded to, any act of criminality, whatever it is, is wrong. And, and I think with the, this debate, for me, highlights that we need, there is a need, it's important to explore any criminality and the, these acts are one. We need to research why. Why would anyone undertake? But isn't that what Cage were doing? In terms of uh, Cage, they were doing that, but well, in, in terms of their approach, were, did they take the right of... of you probably if, you, if you disagree with what Cage, for example, say, if you disagree with the, the, the idea or the statement that the MI5 may have been instrumental in radicalizing this individual, what you do is you provide a counter-narrative. You don't jump on that organization and say that they are somehow justifying these actions simply by saying that we are well aware, we worked with this individual, we are well aware that the MI5 were repeatedly harassing this individual and that may have been a significant factor in this person being radicalized to I, this extent. I agree, that might be a factor, but that does not give the justification of uh, them going and beheading innocent people. The MI5, if they, they were harassing the, uh, this individual, there is a, uh, an avenue that they should be directed, and that, uh, there can be never a justification that MI5 have neglected their duty of care to this individual, that in, that's okay for him to go, go abroad. No, and no, I, think, I think the link we're making is probably not, not a fair one because they've not neglected their duty of care, they've breached it. Uh, to say that there are valid avenues to try and explore MI5's criminality is a, a typical politician's uh, dream because MI5 by definition, you know, it, it operates in the shadows, it has to. Um, but the, 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 Can the I issue, come back to the that? Issue, the issue still is this, because we're focusing on the wrong thing. Cage, you know, expressly stated that the acts carried out by this individual are not what they're defending. The acts themselves are wrong and they, are, uh, they oppose them and they are not from Islam. That, that in itself will not be something that you will find much disagreement about within the Muslim community. But what they are saying is, if you want to explore the narrative of why these you know, extremely disturbing and heinous things happen. You have to explore all the truths behind it, even the uncomfortable ones, such as we may have radicalized him ourselves. I agree. Legitimate questions need to be asked in the right arena. And I think one of the things uh, you touched upon, where in the timeline of his life did he feel the need to resort to this, uh, these uh, abhorrent acts? And I think them are legitimate questions that need to be asked. But again, what's very important, and I think we can't get a draw the fact of, uh, get a draw, draw 
away from is that we, the net needs to be the correct platform. And if MI5 have breached uh, or its duty, they are not above the law. They, they, there needs to be action within the right context. You, you are speaking of a society where MI5 was actively involved in the rendition and torture of individuals and you think that there are avenues within the law to bring MI5 to accountability? There has to be. Oh. We'll, 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 we'll discuss that further, but I'm joined by my second guest uh, in the show. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Community Platform, Morning. Brother Mazza Khan. Um, I'll try and uh, bring yourself into the discussion. We were looking at um, KJ's statement um, in light of the releasing of the identity of Muhammad Amwazi um, and how that statement, having you know, established very clearly that the acts committed by this individual were not what they were trying to defend, criminality is criminality, whoever you know, commits crimes, but that there may have been a contextual backdrop that we were either ignorant of or, more likely, that we choose to ignore that MI5 may have played a massive part in radicalising this individual, or at least a significant part. Is, is that a fair statement for them to make? Um, I think like most people, I watched the, um, uh, the, the statement or the press conference that Cage made. And if you listen to what they said, it was pretty clear and it was very balanced and it was actually trying to explain what's gone on. Yeah. And I think they did that in a very fair way. But what was you know, shocking and ridiculous was the fact that everybody homed into one particular word out of an entire press conference, one particular word they used to describe uh, uh, Jihadi John yeah. uh, Imwazi as beautiful. Yes. And everything else was just ignored. And this, this to me sounded like somebody was being extremely defensive. They didn't want to engage in the debate. They didn't want to engage with the narrative Cage were putting out. Rather, they wanted to just attack Cage. And it was a case of shooting the messenger and not even listening to the message they were given. And that, to me, uh, uh, showed was something that was uh, defensive, as if they themselves were trying to hide something or protect themselves. It, to me, is how a guilty party would res respond. So I found that very strange behavior. But uh, what's, what's slightly disconcerting then is, is it, is it not insensitive to use the term he was a beautiful person or a beautiful individual uh, when we know, or at least allegedly know, uh, of the, the heinous crimes of this person. Is that, I mean, surely you, you could go back to uh, in any individual's life and find a point at which they were a beautiful person, whether it's a child or, you know, as a young adult, etc. Is that a relevant reference for them to make? I think that can be debated and people can have opinions about that. But in my, my particular opinion, I, I don't think it was. And the reason I, I think that is because they're trying to explain or they're trying to demonstrate that this person was a perfectly normal, quote unquote, beautiful person, but then something happened which made it ugly. Yeah. And I think in order to describe that journey, they, they needed to put a marker in the ground and said, look, he was, quote unquote, beautiful. He became ugly. Uh, I mean in a metaphoric sense, yes. I don't mean in a physical sense, that what he did was ugly, and Cage said that, and everybody said that, nobody's defending what this... Uh... No, but nobody's interested in that part of the narrative. Well, <laughs> th th this is the point, you see. This is th the reason they used that word was to show that the, a, a perfectly normal, upright, law-abiding person became a, a, a head chopper. Yes. How did this happen? And along that journey, Cage highlighted the fact his interaction with the uh, security forces, and I don't think it puts the security forces in a good light of what they've done. Mm. And not only in this case, there's been a number of other cases as well. And I think it's a bit dis uh, disconcerting that the uh, people like these have been on the radar, have been monitored, have been spoken to, have been restricted from traveling, and then suddenly they go to Syria and appear in Syria. So that, uh, th this actually um, gives rise to far more questions than what have been answered. What were the security forces doing? Why was it the case that the security forces were able to stop this person from getting employment in Saudi Arabia, from getting married, from traveling to Kuwait? But then he, when he goes to the hottest place on earth, Syria, he was able to go there. Uh, let me bring in uh, a caller into the show, uh, Mohammed Asim from London. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. Wa alaikum as salam. Uh, welcome to Community Platform. Yes, uh, brother. Brothers, my, uh, my question is to the counselor that uh, very often we listen all these titles given to us, jihadis, Islamis, fundamentalists, and God knows what, what. And why we have to swallow all these? 
A criminal is a criminal. Wherever he is, he should be called a criminal. People murder here. And recently, a girl, young girl, has been murdered, cut into pieces, and who radicalized her? And he is a criminal. Same are criminal all over the world. It has nothing to do with jihad, nothing to do with the Islamists, it has nothing to do with fundamentalism, nothing to do with radicalization. People do crime all over the world. Crime is crime. This is my simple question. I don't want to go into detail. Nobody speak out about why we are called Islamists. What Islam got to do with all this? Okay, Brother Jazakallah here for your contribution. Uh, the, the volume uh, was a little bit low on the question, but I think I understood two aspects of it. I understood two aspects of it, and we, we, uh, these are both questions that I want you to ponder whilst we go and take the break. The first one was the idea of why are we referring, for example, and I'm you know, guilty of the same, uh, as to this individual as Jihadi John. Why are we allowing the term Jihad to be owned in this way? And the second one, why is that terminology such as the Islamic State being uh, attached to, you know, uh, basically what the, the caller felt was a group of criminals why are we allowing the term Islamic to be used in this manner? Uh, but that's the question that we will return to after this short break. Uh, don't go away, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Community Platform. Uh, we uh, took a call just before we went on the break and there was two questions, well, you can roll them into one, which was why is it that Muslims are allowing um, the use of Islamic terminology to describe things which are clearly not Islamic? Um, I'll bring uh, Mazar in here first and uh, then yourself do that. Why, why terms like Islamic State or Jihadi John and these? Why, why is there no uproar for Muslims as to the, the incorrect use or the deliberately misguided use of terms which are inherently part of the Islamic history, Islamic fiqh, the Islamic theology? Why, why are we okay with this? I think we're not okay with it. It's, uh, it, it, it this is a general, um, it's a general thing. It's not specific to the new story. The, 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 it, it's a general campaign which is demonizing Muslims in Islam. In every negative news story, or even if it's got nothing to do with Islam, but somebody's got some tenuous link to Islam or a Muslim, they'll mention it. So I don't know, today there was a news story about a child who was murdered by two lesbian couple. Yeah. And they said, Muslim lesbian couple. Muslim lesbian couple is a contradiction in terms, you know. <laughs> well, the action they did is not because of their belief, is not because of their culture, is not because of their religion, but you still mention it. Uh, yeah, adding on to that, Nuldad. Yes, sorry. Adding on to that, there's a, there's a story today of uh, convictions for three, um, no, sorry, four young Somalian girls who got uh, involved in some sort of scuffle. Gunfight. Yeah, and they uh, assaulted a, a, a white girl. Um, they were all convicted today, and the headlines read Muslim girl gang whilst not realizing the hypocrisy of or the inherent contradiction of them going on to say that defense was that they'd never had alcohol prior to that, therefore didn't know how to handle it. Why is, why is the media loaded with such terminology? Why do you think, do you think it's a deliberate plan or are we just being uh, paranoid? I think uh, in terms of, I'm uh, not an expert, but if you look at the research, uh, people like men have done and various other groups and the when it comes to Muslim portrayal in the media, generally there is a negative slant, a slant to it, and you be better worse in this than me. Uh, obviously, Chris Allen, Professor Chris Allen from Lancaster University, did a significant piece of research around that topic, and he, and if you look up when the term Muslim was mentioned, the number of times it was negative was far greater than the number of times it was mentioned in a positive context. Hold on to that, I'll bring you back in. Uh, Mrs. Tahir from Bradford. Alaikum. Welcome to the show. Asalaamu Alaikum, yes. Uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, uh, 
in terms of jihad and uh, uh, extremism, uh, they they join them together. Uh, how they can join them together? If you study internationally and globally, what's happening to Muslim countries and Muslims? Uh, people who are shouting for uh, that uh, uh, these extremists and they uh, who is who is the sufferer and who who is suffering in in the whole world for, for uh, in the name of uh, terrorism uh, Muslims are losing everything and uh, the people who uh, shouting for extremism they uh, fill all these big ferries and ships and warships and take them in Muslim countries. And uh, they recruit so many people uh, to take them in Muslim countries. Are they allowed? To, why, why they are allowed to go there and destroy Muslim countries? Yes, and uh, there is always a reaction of uh, action when uh, when they take these kind of action. Everybody is not same. Some people they take the law in their hand and uh, they want to. Uh, they I, want I to take your point, to. Mrs. Tahir. Jazakallah here for your call. I take your point, um, which is you know almost in line with uh, you know. Cage's statement, or what a lot of other Muslims have been saying, which, you know, whilst you don't try to seek to justify the acts carried out by an individual, um, there's, there's always what, you know, my caller just said, there's always a reaction to actions that you undertake. Um, if we look at the situation, we, we haven't gone to the specifics of it, but two of the charges that have been levelled against the MI5 are that they, uh, after having stopped uh, Mohammed Nawazi on a couple of occasions, they called up the, uh, well, the, his prospective wife in Kuwait and told her that he was a terrorist, broke off the marriage. He had a uh, job lined up, uh, you know, within his own field of computer engineering uh, to go back to Kuwait. They stopped him from traveling there, ruined his career. When these things start to happen, whilst we may not justify the end, can we see how that, that is, you know, a, a favourite terminology used by Western media. That is a conveyor belt towards what is going to happen. Basically, you are, you are taking a chance, whilst that may only happen once every, you know, 10,000 or once every million cases, you are taking a chance that you are ruining people's lives and that may radicalise them. I take what you say on board and obviously there are a number of factors. And if any, I must emphasise, government agency operates beyond the law is still adherent to a rule of law. If it's not, then it has to be accountable. Just as much as uh, Jihadi John is accountable for his actions... But clearly not, because Jihadi John seems to be more accountable for his actions. Why do you say that? Because according to the Western media, Tony Blair is not accountable for what happened in Iraq. In, the, in, in, in words he may be. I, I can't see any trials going on. He has the freedom of the West. He can do whatever he wants. The MI5 is not accountable for rendition and torture. They've, they've not been punished. The CIA's torture report was released by America quite recently. What's happened to the CIA? What, what punishment or curtailments have been placed upon them? The American soldiers who were involved, or the British soldiers who were involved in torturing uh, Abu Ghraib uh, or you know, other prisons. All of these things, we don't see any accountability. Why is Jihadi John more accountable that he deserves severe punishment? And by the way, as Muslims, we keep a consistent stance, I'd say, yeah? Mm -hmm. That we're, we're okay with saying that, you know, wrong is wrong. But why is it not across the board? Why is Jihadi John more wrong than the Western crimes? He isn't more wrong, but justice is for all. And we can't say just because Tony Blair isn't being brought to justice or such and such uh, is not being brought to justice, we're not going to pu uh, push for this. Uh, Actually, we can, though. Because that's, that's how people become radicalised, is what the argument is in this. A lot of people are saying that when people see what is happening, that is what radicalises them. So when we say, you did not punish your own for these crimes, why do you seek to punish the others for theirs? That, that double standard is what radicalises yeah, people. Yeah, but a lot the, the, then, obviously, for a number of factors, then we're no better. Then what, how can we say our faith or our ethics, our laws, or better than we just as uh, no, no sorry yeah. with the term our what I was referring to was the Britain yep. not not Islamic Islamically I already said that is a, uh, that we we argue for a consistent standard I bring Mazar into this does this double standard play a part in the radicalization of people how 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 can we justify the uh, the opposing argument how can we justify that just because you were harassed or your life was made difficult that suddenly leads to you chopping people's heads off in a desert. Look, I, I, 
I, I think I've already mentioned that uh, this, the way the government, the forces, uh, the media, the politicians are, have, are, uh, have taken this issue and they are not being helpful at all. They are further polarizing the debate. They are polarizing the debate and it, more M Muslims who used to be apolitical are now being politicized in the sense that, you know, we don't like what's going on. So the government it's not trying, is not achieving what it wants to achieve. It's actually <coughs> making a bigger problem for itself. It's not helping anybody. It's not helping the government and it's not helping the Muslims. And it's not helping the community at large. So the, the, the approach they've taken is very counterproductive. Now, coming to this issue about does it radicalize somebody? Now, you tell me, if you've got a youth who's going off to Tanzania, right, for a holiday or for whatever reason, let's say he's going for, uh, uh, for military uh, uh, exercises or whatever, or terrorism, whatever you want to call it. If he now suddenly gets stopped, and then he comes to Britain, and he finds that he's not able to now go back to Kuwait, he finds that he's not able to take a job in Kuwait, he finds that he's not able to take a job in Saudi Arabia, he re he, a person like that would become paranoid. All the doors, he's, he's, I read the cage statement and the cage report, and they showed that uh, this uh, Mohammed Mwazi, he used various avenues to try and resolve the problem. The doors were being shut one by one, one by one, meaning you're actually leaving one door open for him, and that's radicalization. So I would argue, yes, what experiences uh, this, this man had to endure, I would say there is a direct link between those experiences and him moving towards, I wouldn't say a radical position, because there's nothing wrong with being radical, yeah. but a, 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 murderous, yes. a murderous position where he's killing people. Yeah. And I would say that if the government is closing all doors and not giving him any avenue, the only avenue they left for him was, <coughs> you become a spy for us. And as an honest person, you would not want to be a spy because it's unethical. You're trying to convey yourself as something that you are not. You're spying on people. You're cheating on people. Uh, you're speaking behind their back. Islam doesn't allow that. So basically, the only door you've left open for that person is to work outside on the dark side. So I can't see how the MI5 or the government can absolutely deny that this had anything to do with it. I would say it's a, maybe not the, fa the only factor, but definitely a major factor. A major factor. Well, g given that, uh, and, and I'll add, add something onto it, and you can you know, come back on this. Why is the narrative has tried to explore which mosque Muhammad um, Mwazi went to, which alleged hate preachers he listened to, was there was the influence at his university, you know, and every other tiny facet of his life? Why is his interaction with the MI5, who didn't have sufficient evidence to charge him with anything for going to Tanzania, why is that interaction beyond discussion? Why is that the one that you want to keep out of the media discussion? Nothing should be off the menu in terms of this uh, debate. If uh, MI5 are guilty and uh, there are certain factors that you know need to be explored, then it, they should be explored. There should be nothing that is off the menu in terms of finding the root causes of w why this individual wants to. But from a government perspective, ultimately our aim is to keep every citizen of this country safe. Sh uh, your aim should be? Is. No, because th there's a big difference between those. If, you, if you're saying that every government acts in the best interest of every individual within their country at all times, then that would be a position that many would disagree with. But it should be. But th let me then ask you, when you say that you know, nothing is off the menu, why is it that when Cage puts something on the menu which is very valid because they have lengthy discussions, telephone records, emails of their discussions with this individual, why, why is that suddenly, is it that the word, one word, beautiful, is the only thing that is focused upon that? When they make a statement, the, the statement is demonized, the organization is demonized, the people running it are demonized. Why is it that that can happen whilst we make grandiose statements like nothing should be off the menu? I, I think one thing, and that a lot of the individuals within this debate are guilty of, is this blame culture that they said this, uh, you know, politics. I think what we need, need to get away from is actually the blame culture and actually getting under, again, getting under understanding what took this m person from being an uh, a active participant of, of a, a society to, become, uh, to undertake these murderous acts. And 
whatever uh, that radicalization or that change from being an active citizen to being a, a, a murderous individual that needs to be explored okay. there, there needs to be the right platform well, in, the, in, the, in the last you know say a few minutes what I want to try and explore is now that this narrative is out there um, a do you feel and I'll again you know throw the question to yourself Mazer, first um, a do you feel that this this narrative is a deliberate demonization of Muslims and B if that is the case how should Muslims respond in the immediate sense, you know, with regards to the cage situation, you know, how you support them and stuff, and in the long run, you know, what, what sort of mindset Muslims need to have uh, to, to be able to, uh, you know, protect their positions and, you know, to not allow Islam to be compromised at the same time? I, th I think one thing they need to do more than anything is not to be quiet, to be honest. We shouldn't feel, um, uh, we shouldn't feel intimidated by the barrage of criticisms that create cages come under and we shouldn't feel uh, intimidated by politicians threatening Muslims that you know if, if you disagree with our values get out of this country or you know you are not British and you'll be subject to this new CTS bill and we'll, we'll throw the book at you we should not feel intimidated intimidated by these things by the media or by the politicians but we should calmly and intelligently articulate our position and engage with the debate and show and ex give, give our v uh, view, give our narrative, give our explanation of what's going on. And what Cage have done is absolutely right. And we should support Cage. We should not uh, hide away from Cage and say, oh, well, th you know, they've been accused of being Islamists, so we don't want anything to do with them. No, absolutely. What they are saying is correct. What they are saying is based on evidence. They have evidence for what they are saying. And I think we should, we should, we should close ranks with, the, with, with people who are speaking out on these issues and counter the government narrative. Because to be quite honest, Yes, if people commit acts of terrorism, then there is a due process of law and people are getting arrested and people are being taken to court and people are being charged or acquitted or whatever. But why is this <coughs> not happening for government institutions who have made mistakes for MI5? I mean, wasn't MI5 also held accountable for the, uh, the, the two people who uh, beheaded the British soldier in Woolwich? Should have been held accountable, yeah. No, they were blamed for it, yeah. yes. So they were blamed for it, but they were involved in that. Yet, they knew this chap, so why were there no questions asked? You knew this guy, he was on the radar, and why were you harassing him? Why were you making his life hell? Don't you think that if you've got a vulnerable person and you push him, you could create further problems? You know, if you've got a person who's got a mental problem, or has got some kind of difficulty, you don't push them. Yeah. You do not push them because they might do something strange. If somebody is suicidal, you know, you don't say things to them that will make them jump off a building. You, you hold back. So if you think that these people are uh, uh, dangerous people or there's something wrong with them, what you don't do is harass them because you are going to push them further away. Mm -hmm. If you want to solve the problem, that is not the way you would approach it. And I would, I mean, a conspiratorial mind would actually suspect that maybe there are elements in the hidden world who want people to do this there was a news report on this yesterday was that is that so i've not read that but it, you know who are allowing this to happen in order to justify their narrative and their draconian legislation and their illegal wars to justify to say look we are doing that because we've got nutters like this an mi6 recruit who'd been sent to with live within the muslim community uh, uh, to radicalize and he radicalized and sent a lot of people to syria this was his statement Yes, uh, you know, again, been, terminology absolutely. That, yeah. And there's been a couple of articles recently also, I think it was in The Guardian as well, whereby uh, an insider was saying that uh, the government has been backing both sides. They've been financing and liaising with both sides, you know, and they've had Islamic radicals uh, who have been under uh, uh, the, uh, the control, if you want to use that word, of, uh, M uh, of uh, uh, the secret services. You know, mm. so they've been they've been hedging their bets on both sides. I, I you you were shaking your head when I asked the question about whether this is a deliberate demonization of Muslims. So let, let, let me try and tackle that first. Do you feel that this is a deliberate demonization of Muslims? I think one thing we've got to be very careful of is taking the stance of a victim mentality. That they're out, to, uh, everyone's out to, to get our community. Everyone. But what against. do you do with that stance when everyone is out to get you? I think they, that's a very, very... It's a separate and lengthy discussion, but you don't feel it's a deliberate demonization. Yeah, but I, I think, and the, the brother touched upon this, we need to get active. And, you know, where wrong is wrong, we need to say, hang on, the legislation in certain areas is wrong. I need to challenge it, in the, like you said, in an intellectual 
And you mean legislation introduced by a Labour Party? No, no. Which you remember? I, I the am terrorism a act, The Terrorism Act was introduced by yourselves, not the Tories. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not here to sit here and uh, defend every policy. And I will uh, say this. The Labour Party in government did not get everything right. But the, so that why should we elect them again? Uh, well, we, we learn from our mistakes. But if you want perfection, you're not going to get it from any political We're party. We're going to go into a separate... Yes, uh, sorry, carry on with yeah, the, But, with the, yeah, but I think what, what you've got to be very careful of, taking this victim mentality, everyone's out to guess it. Whenever there's injustices, as Muslims, we have a duty to fight them. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of if, uh, you, if MI5 or, as you say, MI6 have operated against uh, the rule of law, they should be accountable. And you, obviously you will counter that. They have uh, carried that out uh, various illegal acts. And For which they're not accountable. Uh, but... There, there's a, in terms of the Iraq war, there is the Chilcot inquiry, which is ongoing. And okay. we can have Are you sincere about this? Because the, the murderous criminal Tony Blair has appeared, what, has he testified three times now in front of the inquiry? I'm not sure. Right, he's, he, he's testified yeah. more than once in front of that inquiry. Yeah. And I've watched his performance. And frankly, from a purely legal perspective, I was impressed. Because he was the only barrister or lawyer in the room. The people questioning him... He does the cross-examining as a living. He did that for years. They sat there questioning him and he's, he's basically riddling out of everything. They've had the report for how long? But they chose not to release it before the elections. So Chilco inquiry, it'll end up being a separate issue. What we're saying is, even if they are to be accountable, why is it that there's such a massive media and political storm against Cage saying, merely saying, that they may have played a significant role in the radicalization of a young individual. Why is that so difficult for them to comprehend? And I'll come to yourself, but I know you've got something to say. No, no, sir. I think, again, we're going away from the point of there's a number of factors. And again, if we just target... Like Very this, briefly, yes. We right. target what Cage have said. We lose the... And again, we in the danger of losing the actual debate of where factors went wrong in terms of this person being able to leave the country, get to Syria and carry these heinous acts. But again, it comes down to point. If we concentrate on the cage statement, we're missing a bigger argument of how do we stop this from occurring with other individuals. Okay, but last one minute to yourself on, one on minute. this. You know, this whole victim mentality narrative, you yes. know, Personally, I find it extremely patronizing and it's, it's used for no reason other than to discredit the argument on the other side. Yes. So when somebody's got an argument on the other side, if you don't want to engage with it, you don't want to tackle it, you don't want to refute it, all you say, oh, you've got the victim mentality. That means it's a get out clause. I don't have to address what you're saying because you've got this victim mentality. You've got a problem. No, we don't have a problem. You know, rendition was a reality. That's not victim mentality. It happened. Innocent people were picked up and tortured. You've got Guantanamo Bay. You've got secret prisons. Just recently I read in Poland. Poland, Poland has been fined for having a secret CIA facility. The CIA facilities in, in, in Chicago. This is not victim mentality. This is reality. You know, the drone attacks, which is happening outside of legal process. This is not victim mentality. It is happening. When America's sending troops and killing people and their soldiers are... Or, 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 or brutalizing uh, civilian population. This is not victim mentality, it's reality. And when Israel is being supported in a brutality in Palestine, killing Muslim women, children, men, young, old, this is not victim mentality, it is reality. And the more the people go on about victim mentality, victim mentality, the more it is going to polarize things and it's not going to resolve any issues. And all it's doing, in my opinion, is bringing Muslims closer and closer together on many issues. So it's having a negative it's having a negative uh, um, result to what the government would like to have. Rather than bringing everybody together and feeling that we are part of one society, they are actually polarizing the Muslims from this society that you are different and you are not part of this society. Well, we've had a, uh, quite a healthy discussion with regards to the entire situation surrounding Mohammed Amwazi's identity being made public this week. And we've discussed the various avenues as to whether the criticism that Cage received uh, was A, merited, and B, whether it is actually a front for um, the Islamophobic stance, a deliberate demonization of Muslims. Um, whatever else you, know, you may feel on this, the reality is that in, in adversity, 
uh, people usually do come together and in situations such as this where kids have made a valid and legitimate statement even if you disagree with them they are allowed to have that stance the the severity of the criticism is not merited it is not based upon fairness or justice and what we ought to do is all speak out in favor of their right to be able to discuss MI5's role in the radicalization of not just this individual but others and also to stand behind them and say that Muslims appreciate the fact that these people uh, have carried out a lot of selfless acts over the, several years to try and assist people who have been incarcerated across the world, who've suffered from torture and rendition. Uh, I've been Adnan Khan, this community platform. I'm very thankful to both my guests, uh, Brother Maza Khan and Noor Dad Aziz. Uh, next week, Anjum Anwar will be back here. Uh, inshallah, uh, I'll see you in the near future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.